something good is happening and it's happening to you yeah. uh, you know testimonies are just pouring in since we finished the retreat and i really thank the lord because the lord bless us tremendously and here you just finished retreat and here you are at the congress and then the blessing is still flowing it's like god wants your cup to overflow yeah. and it's going to overflow yeah. already the lord is putting a lot into our lives you will never be the same in jesus name yeah. you know this afternoon i just received a um, you know a testimony you know somebody called and he said that you know it's not in another country entirely maybe i told you a part of it before but I've, i had the full thing today and uh, this uh, person said that you were having crusade in uh, you know one of the states i don't want to mention now in fact that state has been telling me again come back i said stay to overseer i've not been to other places so Zamfara is waiting and uh, sokoto is waiting kebi is waiting and uh, which one is waiting now again <laughs> katsina is waiting and then um, you know delta is waiting bielsa is waiting kaduna is waiting and then he said come back i said hold on i'm going to finish all this was waiting before i come back i'll be getting to you i said i'll be getting to you ah if your amen is not all right it means you don't want me to come hey, but you know some of the things that take place in all these uh, places that i go is as the testimonies are now coming back that we're seeing that god is doing something great and i'm saying that if god can do that through me we're going to multiply that by how many of you here now 15 16 17 000. we're going to multiply the anointing 17 000 all over yeah. and then you're going to take it everywhere you go in jesus name yeah. oh you said but you have not told us what actually happened that's why i'm i'm warming up i said i'm warming up yeah. you know that particular night it was raining and the rain was the rain was terrible it was uh, they said that uh, you know the person spoke to me said it was raining cat and and, it, and everything was just pouring down and then i came on that night and this and i said now everybody there you are not going to dissolve just stay where you are you know it's wonderful when the people when they understand that a prophet comes to them and is telling them something and i said and then after the whole after the preaching preaching in the rain and then the bible i used at that time and to you know give it to our life prayers to help me remodel it because the rain just you know washed everything down but you know thank god for life prayers everybody say thank god for life prayers and then they did that thing for me and then i could use the bible again but it was raining terribly and then i now said something good is coming to you just like i'm telling you now something good is coming to you and i said whatever you need and this particular brother he had all his documents certificate testimonial everything passport he had it in his hand because he had been trying 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 to get scholarship and to go and study overseas and everything was in his hand and then and it was raining and he put everything under his uh, clothes and bent down like this so that the rain will not uh, kind of soak everything and destroy everything and i said right now whatever it is you are holding on there the lord has given you a breakthrough do you know that just a few days after that's how i got scholarship that's how i got visa and then he went and then they did the first day uh, they did the first scene and then he went over there overseas and then i now went to minister over there while i was ministry i said now we're going to have time for testimony he came out and he gave testimony after that testimony i blessed him again now he's finished masters then they put him now in another country again and now he's uh, you know going for they call it phd or what do you call it people <laughs> and you know just going up and up and up and then during this retreat you know he sent uh, you know to london and he said how can i connect because you know i never want to miss the message of my gs i am your, i'm your gs tonight i'm your gs this year and all through you know i find that you know deeper life here gs doesn't retire only to refire and it's coming upon your life in jesus name 
and now he said i want to start deeper life over here deeper life is you know over there now and over here and over here if god is using all these situations whenever it's raining whenever it's hot whatever it is and we just say now blessing is coming and you are ready blessing will come and i praise the lord for bringing you to this particular congress it is going to be a new dawn it's going to be a new breakthrough all your sorrows are over your suffering is over everything you need everything is done in jesus name don't mind whether i sing or i don't sing i pray or i don't pray when i mention look at elisha and then there was farming for three years and then the king they were even eating their children it was terrible and then the woman came to the king and said king deliver me from this situation this woman and i were had an arrangement that will eat my son when it came to her turn to bring her son she she was hiding the son and the king said what in this place let me go and see that person they call man of god elisha while he was coming elisha said that man is coming he wants to come and take off my head hold him there and then when he came he didn't even shout or pray and there was no choir or singer he just said go tell him by this time tomorrow that it's shakeel everything will be so very very cheap and then he didn't you know he didn't do anything he didn't you know jump and dance and celebrate just the word i'm passing that word on to you this year everything you have ever prayed for and they have not been answered the answers have come and when elisha said that then it, we want man there they call him the deputy king assistant king on whose hand the king was leaning he said ah the man did not even shout and pray and do this and that even if god will open the windows of heaven will that be how can that be it will be and then elisha said before you die you will see it but i pity you for your unbelief you will see tell me now you are, you are preach all of us are preachers i said you will see but but you will eat out of it because you have come here and you are honoring the lord and all this the lord is putting inside you inside you i'm telling you this year your family will not be the same again your ministry will not be the same again as you open your mouth like this and pray i'm telling you the lord is going to answer your prayer bad luck is gone failure gone enemies defeated you will laugh this year raise up your hands just thank the lord just thank the lord lord i thank you lord i thank you lord i thank you something good is happening to me already something wonderful is happening to me already I will never be the same my life will never be the same my family will never be the same my children will never be the same your ministry will never be the same your community will never be the same anywhere you go paths of darkness will bow before you anywhere you go a new dawn a new daybreak a new breakthrough happening to you already the word of your mouth will be the word of power will be the word of anointing will be the word of authority and no man no magician no evil power will be able to stand before you this year and for the rest of your life in jesus name yeah. heavenly father we receive that we accept that it is happening already in jesus name i pray lord there will be a transformation 
there will be a change there will be a turning around for everybody here anyone hearing the sound of my voice now oh lord i pray their blessings will overflow this year in jesus name you will go from strength to strength from faith to faith from power to power you go from glory to glory all the concerns of your heart for your family your concern for your place of work your concern for your ministry for your your concern for your local church and your concern for all our for our church all together the lord will give us the fulfillment this year in jesus name you are not barren anymore you're fruitful you're not a failure anymore you're a success and the lord is having his favor upon you now his mercy upon you now you will never be the same again in jesus name lord i pray according to your promise open the windows of heaven pour out a blessing upon everyone there will not be room enough to receive it lord i pray nobody here will miss their blessing this year confirm it to lord in jesus name we pray another amen god bless you real real good your blessing will never end in jesus name i just love you and i appreciate you and i'm praying for you and even after you have left here my prayers will continue for you god bless you i can sit down uh, can i still preach yes. you have time yes. how many of you have time how much time are you giving me this time now <laughs> god bless you god bless you wonderful children wonderful sons and daughters i'm just praying that as children go beyond their fathers you'll be greater than i am yes. we're looking at the word of god right now in acts of the apostles chapter 20 verse 28 acts chapter 20 verse 28 take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the holy ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of god which he has purchased with his own blood that is he the lord jesus christ the head of the church he is a redeemer he is a savior he is our lord he has purchased the church with his own blood and then the lord said when he purchased that church in his own blood he made you the pastor he made you the shepherd he made you the overseer he made you the one to care and they want to nurse and they want to feed and they want to grow and they want to develop that church he says he has made you overseer and i pray that your ministry as an overseer in the church of the living god a pastor in the church of the living god and a minister in the church of the living god i pray it will be a fruit in jesus name and you look at that one you say purchase he purchased he bought us he redeemed us he took us out of where we were and he paid the full price because of that you belong to him we belong to him we're looking at exodus chapter 74 exodus chapter 74 i'm reading from verse 2 exodus 74 verse 2 remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old you see that again a congregation an assembly a fellowship a church that god himself has purchased the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed this mount zion wherein thou hast dwelt he has purchased he has bought he has paid the full price and it's a congregation it's an assembly it's the church of the living god and he paid the price for that church and as we look at ourselves as a church as we look at the local church you are coming from and that local church the people who are born again the people who are saved the people who are redeemed they have been purchased by the blood of the lamb and then we're looking at exodus chapter 15 exodus chapter 15 the assembly of people who have been delivered who have been redeemed who have been brought out of bondage they are the purchased people exodus chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 16 exodus 15 16 fear and dread shall fall upon them upon the egyptians upon your enemies 
by the greatness of thine arm they shall be as steel as steel as to as a stone till thy people pass over O lord till thy people pass over which thou hast purchased it's telling us that all the people that come that are belonging to the lord he has purchased us and it says till your people pass over you will pass over the red sea is there you'll pass over the valley is there you'll pass over and all those challenges are there and the lord is saying you will pass over because you are purchased and because you are bought with a price and then it says thou shalt bring them in and plant in and plant them in in the mountain of thine inheritance in the place O lord which thou was made for thee to dwell in in the sanctuary O lord which thou which thy hand has established the lord shall reign forever and ever in your life the lord will reign in our ministry the lord will reign in your local church that he has purchased the lord will reign in our church at large the whole assembly of redeemed people of sanctified people of saved people of purchased people the lord will reign in jesus name now when you have bought something you possess that thing what is your desire on what you bought that's what we are talking about god's passion for a purchased church because he gave his only begotten son and it is through that price that the son has paid the blood is shed your his own life that he gave it is because of that price he paid we're now called a purchased church a redeemed church and a church that is bought out of slavery what's his passion number one divine ownership of the purchased church divine ownership of the purchased church because he paid the price the greatest price he could ever have paid because of that he has a passion on that church he has a passion that i own this this one belongs to me this one is mine divine ownership of the purchased church number two doctrinal oneness in the purchased church he wants the church he has purchased and the church he bought and the church he brought together and the church he brought out of the dungeon out of darkness out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son he wants a unity a fellowship a oneness in that church doctrinal oneness in the purchased church number three disciples obedience in the purchased church disciples obedience disciples obedience in the purchased church because he bought us we belong to him we do not belong to ourselves and therefore whatever we do wherever we go and whatever we carry out whatever duty responsibility he gives what have we to do but just to obey because he is the one that purchased us number one divine ownership number two doctrinal oneness number three disciples obedience number one now divine ownership of the purchased church let's come back to that acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 28 acts chapter 20 we're looking at verse 28 it says take it therefore to yourselves and to all the flock all the flock all the flock over the which the holy ghost has made you overseers look at a local church now and see all the church that whole local church in that local church all the church all the flock we have children we have youths we have women we have men we have ushers we have security we have singers we have instrumentalists we have house fellowship leaders we have women reps we have zona leaders we have everybody there and the lord has made that shepherd that pastor that leader overseer on all of them the whole flock and he's saying they all belong to me the workers and the members the ministers and the members and they are all under the authority under the leadership under the 
instruction under the guidance of that overseer of that pastor and he says now he's talking to those overseers he said look up unto me i'm the one that made you the overseer i'm not talking about myself I'm talking about the holy ghost he said the holy ghost has made all those pastors and leaders overseers and they shouldn't be negligent in their responsibility they should take heed unto themselves to feed the church that he has purchased with his own blood and as, and as we see that that this is the scripture we're going to allow all those pastors and all those overseers to fulfill their responsibilities in jesus name and, and, you, and you know what you do also when you are a member what you do to the minister and you are not going to be a member forever you are going to you go from membership to minister and when you become a minister what you did to members to ministers when you are a member be very careful i said be very careful what you did to the minister when you are a member when you become a minister tell me now what you saw your it may take some years my brothers and sisters i'm serious about this and there was one mother that came and you know she, she had prayer requests and the prayer it, it was burning in her heart and she she really wanted deliverance and she wanted prayer and i said oh, what's the matter she said i realized something now i'm a married woman and i have this a child and i know what i did to my mother when i was as old as this my child that i'll bite my mother i'll I, my, I frustrated that mother now the mother is gone the mother is dead and now when i got this a child as i was rejoicing and then this child began to you know grow up and the tears began to come out I, exactly what i did to my mother is what this child is doing to me and the child this child knows nothing and my mother is gone and it is not that my mother told this child to do anything and i need real prayer and then she repented and turned around and then we broke that joke and she became free but the point is now that you are a member in the church and the lord the holy ghost himself has placed an overseer over that church if you do anything that you know frustrates the life of those ministers when you become a minister and overseer like them be not deceived whatever a man sows that shall he also reap another brother was uh, talking to me now he's uh, you know a minister in you're not not over here you know if we are if they are here i cannot talk about them it's because they are not here praise the lord he said uh, pastor i need prayer i said what do you need prayer for he said you know i'm now an overseer over here and, I, and i'm surprised that you know i tell this one get up and go there and go to that branch and the fellow said don't talk to me like that i'm not going anywhere i face another person and i said uh, you know that person not going how about you we need to expand the church and this and that uh, can you go over there and the fellow said it's me you are talking to never open your mouth to talk to me like that i want to tell you that i'm not going to be uh, you know, dreaming and i'll go here go there and then he went to pray and he was saying oh lord what's the problem this church is not going to move forward and then the lord reminded him that when he was under an overseer actually a state overseer and the state overseer will say go here and he would look at so here face to face and say i'm sorry the lord has not spoken to me and because he did that to his state overseer he now eventually you know another he became now an overseer where he went not in nigeria here he was uh, you know he went to another player and became an overseer there still deeper life and then he said you go he said me don't talk to me like that you go me don't talk to me like and he was frustrated and the lord reminded him and said that's what you sowed now that's what you did 
that's what you did when you were not an overseer and then he began to pray and he said oh lord i'm sorry forgive me change things and then i came to their location and he came to me and he said pastor i need a higher anointing to break that yoke and then he confessed all that and then i prayed for him and things have changed now just like i prayed for you today tonight and things have changed now but we're not going to go back to that place to what we're doing before in jesus name and the lord is saying that because he purchased us and because he has bought us we now totally completely belong unto him look at exodus chapter 21 exodus chapter 21 I read there from verse 2 Exodus chapter 21 we're reading from verse 2 Exodus 21 verse 2 if thou buy an Hebrew servant that word buy another word for that is purchase if thou purchase an Hebrew servant six years he shall serve and in the seventh year he shall go out free from no, for nothing if he came in by himself he shall go out by himself if he were married then his wife shall go out with him if his master have given him a wife and she has borne him sons or daughters the wife and her children shall be her masters and uh, he shall go out by himself he's talking about the ownership of the wife that is the master owns that wife and the master owns those children because the master bought him with his money and when the lord god almighty has purchased us with the greatest of all prices the blood of jesus christ it means that you belong to god your wife belongs to God. Your children belongs to God. Everything you got as a result of answers to prayer, everything belongs to God. In verse 5, And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, and all unto the door, unto the oppose, and his master shall bore his ear through with an oil, and he shall serve him how long? forever it belongs that's divine ownership divine ownership because the lord has bought us because the lord has purchased us and because the lord possesses us because of that we belong to him forever in ezekiel chapter 16 ezekiel chapter 16 he cleansed us he washed us he purged us he made us the kind of people we are today and because of what he has done that is why he has divine ownership authority over us we're looking at ezekiel chapter 16 reading from verse 8 now when i passed by thee and looked upon thee behold thy time was the time of love and i spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness yea i swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee says the lord god and thou becamest mine and thou becamest mine and then i washed thee with water yea i thoroughly washed away thy blood thy filthiness and from thee and i anointed thee with all i closed thee also with broidered work and shot thee with badger skin and i guarded thee about with linen and i covered thee with silk he said because of that thing that i've done i bought you you belong to me that's divine ownership upon every one of us who have been saved who have been cleansed who have been purged and who have been put who have put on the robe of righteousness that robe of righteousness purchased by the blood of the lamb the blood of jesus christ is only begotten son in isaiah chapter 43 isaiah chapter 43 we're reading from verse 7 it says in verse 7 every even everyone that is called by my name anybody called by his name here you are that person you are the brother you are the sister everyone called by my name for i have created him for my glory 
not for yourself it's for his glory i have formed him yea i have made him verse 4 verse 21 it says this people have i formed for who for myself divine ownership because they bought us because he purchased us because he cleansed us because he paid the greatest price that he could ever have paid because he paid that for us it says i have formed him for myself they shall show forth my praise we're looking at matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 verses 45 and 46 matthew chapter 13 verse 45 and then verse 46 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pills who when he had found one pill of great price he went and he sold all that he had and he bought it it's talking about the kingdom of god actually this is a parable talking about the lord jesus christ he saw us where we were and he saw some pill of great price on us or within us and then everything is god he put that price on us and he went to the cross of calvary and he died for you and died for me and he died for us that's why it says the church of god purchased with the blood of jesus christ first corinthians chapter 6 first corinthians chapter 6 we're looking at verse 19 first corinthians 6 verse 19 watch know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and ye are not your own and ye are not your own and ye are not your own the lord wants us to understand because when a person buys something he can use that thing he bought to his own advantage and the thing that was bought has no right to say no i don't want to do that no i don't want to go there it's like if you bought a car and then you want to drive the car to the market and then the car is received saying no i only want to be driven to the office i'm an office car i'm not for market or you want to take it to your village you want to you know transport yourself through that car that you brought bought and then the car is you know trying to signify that i don't like village what i want is i want to only go to the office and come back and once you come back for the office pack me here because that's the only thing i will do now the car does not have mouth to talk but you have a mouth to talk and the lord is saying i have bought you and because i bought it you do not belong to yourself the very fact that we are purchased means that the lord can use us anywhere he wants to use us uh, you know the lord can you know do wonderful things uh, through us and he will do it in jesus name you know one of our you know reps in lagos uh, one of our group coordinators uh, you know sitting right uh, here uh, my brother on this side he was telling me the other day he said uh, sir you know when i was an usher i said you an usher he said yes i was an usher and then i was also you know a zona leader at the same time you know he was a zona leader and then we needed ushers and we say hey uh, brother so and so you be an uh, usher and uh, and he just accepted he was thinking at that time because of his place of work how well, I could because I'm, you know, walking in this other place, and you know, they made him to travel around here and there. And now he's already a zona leader, and also must be an usher at the same time. And he accepted. And they praise the Lord, is no more an usher now, he's now a pastor. Give me a good amen. amen. And then, you know, that's what God does that because you are purchased, because you are bought with a price wherever it is that god needs you you say lord i am available because i do not belong to myself ye are not your own look at verse 20 for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's we belong to god i said you belong to god and because of that whatever he wants of you that is what you will do and if we come to you and we say we are planting churches we're planting churches and you are being an usher come on now you're going to be a pastor now you are being in the choir come on now you're going to be a pastor now and you're being an instrumentalist but drop that and then you are going to be this now i pray the lord will help you 
you will not shake your head and say no no i cannot leave my instrument i cannot leave my singing i cannot leave my security work i'm going to leave this you belong to the lord and wherever he needs you that is what you will do you will do it in jesus name we're looking at first kings chapter 20 first kings chapter 20 verses 3 and 4 first kings chapter 20 verses 3 and 4 thy silver and thy gold is mine thy wives also and thy children even the goodliest are mine the king of israel answered and said my lord o king according to thy saying i am thine and all that i have that's what you need to say to the king of kings that's what we need to say to the lord of laws i am thine and all that i have divine ownership john chapter 17 john chapter 17 we're reading from verse 6 john chapter 17 verse 6 i have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word that's divine ownership thine they were by creation thine they were now by redemption you have given them unto me that's double ownership belonging to the father belonging to the son by creation and by redemption in verse 9 it says i pray for them i pray not for the world god has a special attention over you because you belong to the lord because you are purchased he said i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine divine ownership if you are saved you are giving to the lord jesus christ and he says i'm building my church upon upon the rock and he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against that church and he's calling you to build along with him and you cannot say i am too busy i'm doing this i am doing that i'm pursuing this i'm having this project but you belong to him and you do not have any final say over your life it is what he wants you to do you are going to do because he says you are mine look at verse 10 and all mine are thine and thine are mine and i am glorified in them the lord will be glorified in your life in jesus name now point number two you belong to him i belong to him and because we belong to the same master we cannot fight and because we belong to the same lord we cannot contradict one another and he says you are mine he is mine she is mine and all of us who belong to the lord we are purchased and therefore become his servant we become even his born slaves and then he says you slave this is what you do you slave this is what you do. you slave that's what you slave that's what you do and then our work will complement one another it will not contradict it will not conflict there will be no confusion there will be no contention there will be no fighting there will be no struggling because we we'll belong to the same master and the lord wants that kind of unity and that kind of togetherness and that kind of understanding because we belong to the same master say for example the overseer is about to preach and the ushers are there and the security people are there and the singers are there and the choir master and the choir people orchestra people they are there all of us were bought by the same price and we are serving the same master and there will be no contradiction the ushers will not contradict the um, orchestra or the singers and the singers will not contradict the ushers or the security and the security will not try to use their training against the choir and the singers so that they will not be effective we're serving the same master and then the choir or the singers will not try to walk against the preacher the pastor the overseer because we're serving the same master there will be one day there'll be unity if there is no unity the lord will not be happy he'll say i put all of you and i put you in different places you do this and you do this and you do this and you do this everything is for me it is not for you and when one contradicts the other 
then there's confusion in the house and then we're not able to build the kind of church christ the head of the church wants to build and that contradiction is not the will of god there must be unity they look at our country if for example you have uh, you know the uh, soldiers and then you have the police and then you have all the, the civil defense and then you have uh, you know all these other people that uh, they what do you call them now this one's controlling traffic i'm sure you know their names you know their title and they're all there and then there's confusion somewhere and all of them we draft the police there we draft the army there and then we draft uh, all the civil defense people there and they have to control things you line up you do this and bring orderliness and then if they go there and the army the soldiers are trying to prove uh, greater than the police and the police are trying to also prove their own point and then the civil defense they're also trying to say don't you know that nowadays we're no more like we used to be they even pay us now because we're now stated as days and days and then the other person don't you know that we also have a right if they have a kind of confusion among them the things they want to control they will leave all that alone uh, just be you know proving to one another i'm greater than you are no you are not uh, indispensable we are very important don't you know who we are when there is an internal struggle like that the thing they need to put in order in society they will not be able to do and the same thing in the church the same thing in the church that one section is not fighting against another section we are not going to fight I say we're not going to fight because it is that unity the oneness that is going to make us achieve what we need to achieve point number two doctrinal oneness in the purchased church let's look at john chapter 17 again verse 8 for i have given them the words which thou givest me and they have received them and have known surely that i came out from thee and they have believed that thou did send me i gave them each of them i gave them the word the same word that the father gave unto the lord jesus christ i give a and b and c and d and e and f and g and h and i everyone i gave all of them and they have accepted when we accept the same word and we're standing by the same word that's oneness doctrinal oneness look at verse 11 in verse 11 now i am no more in the world with these but these are in the world and i come to the holy father keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be tell me one as we are one as we are jesus christ never contradicted the father and the father never saw any kind of disagreement or any kind of a personal self-will and willful authority that no i'm also i'm god the son and i can decide some things why should it be that it's only the father that is deciding i and my father are one and then as he gave me commandment so i do i do all things according to what he has told me that's the doctrinal unity he says as we are one i want them to be one and if any of us you know sometimes the devil can come and tempt us there's temptation sometimes the devil can come and make suggestion there are suggestions that you know why why is it that you know every time that man he comes over there and he says everybody now do this and everybody is you know like that why don't you have a mind of your own an idea of your own and you have an action of your say no i cannot do that because i know we are one the hands and the legs and the lungs and the heart and the every part of the body they must be in unity with the head and when that unity is there then we can go anywhere and we're going to go places let you look at verse 14 it says in verse 14 i have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world he said i have given them the word and the world has hated them uh, you understand that we have the same enemy satan is the arch enemy of god and man and that enemy when we're united 
we're going to overcome that enemy but if we're not united among us and the devil succeeds in putting a crack in our wall putting a crack in our oneness putting a crack in our fellowship and putting you know one mind against the other and then instead of fighting the devil then we'll begin to fight ourselves do remember Jehoshaphat when Jehoshaphat came to the battlefield and those people were mighty in fact Jehoshaphat said oh lord what are we going to do we do not know what to do because we have the ammonites and we have this and we have this and all the, from the mount of Seir, they all came together in all their power in all their strength what are we going to do and they, they look at this Jehoshaphat Sami, they were weak but they were united and they were courageous they were bold even though they were weak they were that what i mean by weak they don't have all the weapons and all that's why i said we can we don't know what we are going to do against this enemy these people they outnumber us and they have more power than we have and then a message now came to them that they should believe in the lord their god and they should believe in the prophet and they will do what they will prosper then they all had their minds together and then when joshua chose all those singers and he said just praise is the name is holiness and they were united together they were not seen uh singing when you know all these people are there instead of you know getting all the captains and ordering everything and saying you do this and you do this and have give us strategy of battle and strategy of war you are talking about singing but they were singing but these people that were strong these people that were many these people that were mighty what happened is that they began to fight one another and when this mighty army of the confederacy when they were fighting one another it was their disunity and conflict and struggle against themselves that even defeated them and Jehoshaphat and the army the united army did not even have to fight any battle they all killed themselves and see this a mighty army here look around look around all one or two or three or four or five or six or seven and then we have some people in the overflow of eight nine and ten look at this mighty army if we are united there's nothing we cannot do if i say something and then you say everybody says amen, amen. i'm telling you that even satan he will flee if in the strength of the lord in the strength of unity we decree anything here and there is no crack in our wall and there's no division among us and there is nothing that is uh, you know if somebody say no why should he do that why should he say that we have a section here we have a section here if there is unity we're mighty enough to take the continent of africa in fact you know i'm going i don't need to tell you too much but i want to tell you that by the grace of god god is opening doors here opening doors here opening doors here i just came back here from united kingdom that's from um, from uh, london and all those places and uh, you know as i got uh, over there uh, when i came back the letter you know i got from particular ministry were thousands of members thousands of members and these people these are british people not you know thousands of nigerians or thousands of days and that the letter they gave and it said we transfer the leadership of that ministry onto you when you think about that and you know instead of my just telling those leaders with word of mouth i said you know i need to see you and then i give them the letter i said read this one and then as we you know as i read uh, i read that letter themselves they saw that this is something the lord is doing and uh, you know this afternoon i got a message from there also they are saying that there's going to be a planning meeting of that ministry that now that you know you have come into the leadership of that ministry we're going to meet together and then you need to you know show us the vision and show us what's the way forward and all that the door the lord is opening if we are united more is still to come and more it will reach you in jesus name i said it will reach you in jesus name we're going to unite together 
the same voice and the same mouth and the same heart and the same life we're moving on together and the lord is going to accomplish his work in our lives in jesus name look at verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth as thou hast sent me to the world even so have i also sent them into the world and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth then it says neither pray i for these alone but for them also who are these them also i said who are these them also the lord is praying for you the spirit of god is praying for you and we are praying for you you cannot fail you cannot fall because when you join the prayers of heaven and the prayers of earth everything centered upon you success has come victory has come dominion has come and you're going to overcome in jesus name and then it says in verse in verse it says in verse um in verse 29 that prayer for this alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be scattered in disagreement they all may be what they all may be what for the sake of jesus we must be one in answer to his prayer we must be one whatever whatever is suggest anything in anybody's mind to go against brother so-and-so and go against sister so-and-so and limit brother so-and-so and limit sister so-and-so and prove i'm greater than you are whatever is bringing that suggestion cannot be from jesus cannot be from god cannot be from the holy spirit it has to be from the enemy of the unity of the church we are not going to allow it i said we're not going to allow it all the things within us because you know in unity will be strong in unity will move forward in unity will accomplish everything he has told us he has given us to accomplish and then he says that they all may be one they all may be one as our father art in me and i in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me our world will believe our nations will believe our continent will believe and all over the world as we touch the lives of people they're going to believe in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 2 verse 42 acts chapter 2 verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship they all of them all of them without an exception and they all continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship doctrine first before the fellowship in the apostles doctrine because if there's no unity in doctrine what well, there's, there's nothing else if there's no unity on the truth there's nothing else if there's no unity on the scripture interpretation of the scripture there's nothing else they all continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and then in the breaking of bread and in prayers without doctrinal unity the prayers cannot follow the prayers cannot have any effect in in the in the apostles doctrine fellowship breaking of bread and then in prayers in first corinthians chapter one chap, first corinthians chapter one i'm reading from verse 10 first corinthians one we're looking at verse 10 now i beseech you brethren by the name of our lord jesus christ that she all tell me speak the same thing that she all speak the same thing our unity is not unity in the signboard as a signboard of deeper life in that local church is some a similar kind of a signboard of deeper life in that local church a signboard of deeper life in that local church. only unity in signboard unity in name but not unity in reality if there's real unity we speak the same thing what you hear from here you accept it and believe it and leave it out and then the same thing you go to tell other people the same thing you go to preach you're not going to say well that's what they believe uh, over there but now we're going to believe another thing over here and then when some members are saying oh my brother how could you do this how could you say ah, don't bring lagos here don't bring nigeria here we are you know over here and we have autonomy we have independence it says that ye all speak tell me 
the same thing we're going to do that it tells us in philippians chapter 1 philippians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 27 philippians chapter 1 verse 27 only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of christ that whether i come and see you or else be absent i may hear of your of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit stand fast in one spirit the devil will not be able to penetrate such people that are standing firm and standing fast in one spirit and then it says and with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel not striving against the gospel but striving for the face of the gospel Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 Ephesians 4 11 and he gave some apostles some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints what he's telling us is that whether it's an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher they're united together for the perfecting of the saints you know if an apostle comes and he says something and the prophet comes and he says something different contradictory and the evangelist comes and then he pulls down what the apostle and the prophets what they have said so that he, the people will know that he the evangelist he is the most important person and he is the one that is closest to God and those people are just bragging with title and name apostle and prophet but he is a real person that is going here and there and then if the pastor comes and sit down that this is what I say I am the pastor the shepherd and then the teacher comes and then the teacher says you know my gift I teach the word of God and then he contradicts everybody else the saints will not be perfected if we're going to be perfected then what the pastor the overseer is saying and the singers are singing and the orchestra people are playing and the ushers and they're doing their work and the security doing their work and the children church leader doing his work and the campus leader doing their own when all of us were united together that's what will bring the perfection of the saints but when there is contradiction and the campus people they are saying well you know we are the brain of the church and we you know even look at the government you know the people advising the president the people doing this who are the university people and then the people that are doing the research and digging the oil and you know making the economy to move forward who are the university people and the people in the bank and the people in the te teaching profession who are the university people therefore we are the, the real people without us all the rest of the people what can they do if we have that kind of attitude in the church that you know we are the most important we are the most essential we are the we are the people nobody can push aside you know, pride is going to scatter us but when apostle and prophet and evangelist and pastor and teacher we, we know that our goal is the perfection of the saints and for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ when the choir comes there they edify and when the ushers stand there they edify and when the security is meeting there they edify and when the pastor comes he's happy he's, you know he does his own part and there's no proving of any point i'm greater than you are you are you know less than i am we're all together walking together i believe that when we do that this church will move forward and that's what the lord is saying here and he's saying till we all verse 13 come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ the lord will fulfill it we're looking at a uh, second timothy chapter two second timothy chapter two verse two second timothy chapter two verse two and the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same don't subtract the same don't add the same don't more don't modify the same don't change it the same commit thou to faithful men to faithful men not to tribal men not to your friends not to your relatives you know if we just keep to the word of god as god has helped us and we have kept to the word of god you know in a one a place where i visited recently 
a person from another church went out to witness and somebody got seriously converted completely converted and then that person went to a pastor in deeper life and said please this fellow is my convert i am not a member of your church but i want to send this convert to your church because i know that's the place where this convert will grow and then the pastor of deeper life was surprised said, but you're not a member of deeper life you have your own church and you went out to witness to this person and this person became soundly converted and now you are telling me that you want the person inside deeper life because it's there the church the demand will be able to grow how about in your own church let me tell you our church the tribe in our church is this particular tribe and that particular tribe you know all our our songs our leaders and all our pastors the majority they are from that particular tribe and this man this convert is not from that tribe if he if i bring him to our church it's going to be frustrated because after the service you know you have a group of people there they understand english they won't talk english they'll be speaking the local language and then if he goes to this area and even if he's standing there with them they just continue their you know local language and they that fellow will be frustrated but i know that in deeper life i heard of you that there's no Igbo, there's no yoruba there's no outside there's no ibibio when you are like when you are there all of you you are all the same you know even outside they know that that is how we are they see that there's no disunity of tribe among us there's no unit there's no uh, kind of division of you know here and there that if it is uh, you know somebody won't want to give out responsibility the person that we know will do this inappropriately they know that that is what we do and this quality in this church i pray it will never end i said it will never end you know in some other places they say if you are from that part of the country you can never be a recognized pastor overseer in their church but over here anywhere you are whether you are from my you know area or from my you know not from my area in fact who even knows my area <laughs> i said who even knows my area okay one hand over there <laughs> praise the lord i don't have any area i'm just a deeper life I said I'm just deep alive and we are all together united together in Jesus name that's why I saying the same thing that you have had you will commit to faithful men not tribal men not people from your locality and not people from your tribe it just says you commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also with one voice and one mind and one consecration one decision we're going the same direction in jesus name number three now is the disciples obedience in the purchased church thank god for the obedience to the word of god that's what the lord has seen in us and the lord is doing this great and mighty thing and i pray that this good quality of faithfulness and loyalty dedication consecration obedience the lord has seen in us i pray the lord will help us to continue in jesus name it, it amazes me the great great thing the lord has done through you and through all of us together obedience to the word and, and you know sometimes uh, when we're talking about obedience to the to the word of god there are people that the, the less they go in obedience to the lord you know I, in fact i would not be able to even tell them to obey the lord that way but you know they do it and i praise the lord because all of us were doing it in jesus name and uh, you know over here at the headquarters that uh, we're trying to build uh, you know bagada and uh, you know so just our, our leaders just because we divided the money that we were to bring for bagada to raise up uh, bagada and then we're also building that purity and uh, peace uh, hostels have you seen that is it good you didn't tell us now put your hands together for jesus praise the lord i said praise the lord you know you just come in and then you just sleep and pack all your mattress and everything and then on saturday say bye bye headquarters thank god and then somebody says if i can transfer that a hostel to you know our state it will happen in your state 
because what is happening here is obedience can i tell you something we were now and then we said we we need money for this and money for this and there was a brother there in the fellowship where they when the group uh, pastor or the you know uh, the DC pastor was talking i was saying we need this and we need this and he had he was a graduate and he is is a graduate of course but at that time i'm talking about that time and he had been looking for work for years he didn't get any work and he had done interview interview upon interview send your cv there and then your cv here sent everywhere no work nobody will get him and then eventually so that he will not start to keep soul and body together he went to buy motorcycle so that he can be using okada to just carry people is english perfect certificate clean qualification high but no job so he went to buy motorcycle and was riding and now we made an announcement and we said obey the lord do the will of the lord and if you do the will of the lord the lord will surprise you this brother i couldn't if i knew i couldn't have told him to do that on his own that motorcycle the only means of livelihood he went to sell it when he sold it all the money without taking any cover any farthing away from it he put it right there he said lord even if i start to death i will obey you i'm going to have a part in this thing they are building there after he did that he had done an interview three years earlier and three years earlier they didn't call him all of a sudden they just wrote to him and he said are you still interested of course i am they gave him praise the lord they gave him employment they gave him a car they gave him a house and they gave him i think also a driver and within a short time from okada to an exec ceo praise the lord as you are clapping for him that's how we will clap for you because when your obedience disciples obedience and say i don't care whether i starve but i'm going to obey the lord me and my house we're going to serve the lord as we clap for that brother now that you don't know but we know you we're going to clap for you and in your state in your region everywhere you are as we unite together and you say my obedience this year will not be a calculated obedience a moderate obedience it should not be a kind of little obedience a divided obedience all my heart prompt obedience and totality of my life i give to the lord this year you'll see what you have never seen why don't you rise up and pledge yourself to the lord and say lord here am i here am i there's going to be divine ownership the lord owns me the lord possesses me and because he has purchased me and bought me i'm going to do everything he's calling me to do i'm going to be obedient to the word of the lord doctrinal unity doctrinal oneness no contradiction anymore one spirit and one mouth and one doctrine and one lord that were exalting and disciples obedience i'm going to be obedient i'm going to be obedient the lord is calling you you're going to be obedient and that obedience the lord will bless it in jesus name open your mouth and tell the lord open your mouth and tell the lord i am going to be obedient obedient to his word everything we're hearing that's how the blessing will come upon your life that's how the blessing will come upon your life great things are going to happen to you this year because you are purchased because you are bought with a price and you come to the realization now that you belong to the lord and because you belong to the lord good things will keep on happening to you remember 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 that because you belong to the lord that's why that obedience is going to be rewarded by the lord divine ownership i don't belong to myself you don't belong to yourself you belong to the lord give all you've got your very best unto the lord and now doctrinal oneness doctrinal oneness we're one you're not trying to walk against the preacher against the pastor against the overseer in your singing in your orchestration in your ushering in your security work your sanitation work 
in the domestic work in feeding us all united together all united together and then in doctrine in doctrine in doctrine what we preach we say the same thing we speak the same thing we preach the same thing go in the same direction apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers all saying the same thing all moving the church in the same direction your use of communication skill your ability and your knowledge to support to complement saying the same thing to go along together with the leadership in the church practical oneness doctrinal oneness perpetual oneness anywhere we are scattered all over this country scattered all over this continent of africa scattered all over the world the same thing the same thing speaking the same thing not fighting one another that's what defeated the confederacy of those armies that came against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat had no weapon, had no experience, had no mighty army, but what they had on their side, they were united. They believed in God, they believed in the prophet. That unity give them an upper hand over all those other people multitudes of people with all their skill all their ability all their weapons they failed they failed because they fought one another instead of fighting their common enemy they fought one another and the lord is telling us the secret of victory of success of triumph of dominion of church growth that we all get united together no section of the church is trying to prove a particular point that we can hinder the overseer hinder the superintendent hinder the preacher hinder the pastor so we can also say we are indispensable without us nothing will move forward let there be unity and let there be the disciples obedience obedience to everything that he says and the lord himself this year will give us the victory it's now in your hand that triumph that victory that dominion it's a new dawn in this new year